or drifting in and out of consciousness, didn't know where he was, incoherent. That was before the fall. And now that we've got that out of the way with tongue-in-cheek, Glenn McAleer was involved in a very nasty fall at Newcastle last Friday night. I caught up with the G-Mac during his commitment to Club and Angle today with his daughter, Tian Sun. Well, Glenn, geez, it's good to see you here. And no doubt everyone in the barn's also very pleased to see you up and about. Yep, um, a lot of people want to chat to me today to make sure I'm fit and healthy, and uh, I appreciate all the well wishes. Unlike you, don't want to have a chat. Yeah, no, I don't like to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good that, that uh, there's a bit of love out there for me. Yeah, I appreciate it. How are you feeling? Yeah, a little bit sore around the left-hand side of my body, so quite obviously uh, I don't have any recollection of falling, but I must have uh, instinctively thrown myself to the left-hand side because, yeah, all the left-hand side of my body's feeling all the pain. So what's the upshot, Glenn, as far as the uh, injuries and niggles? Uh, just got soreness, nothing's broken. Um, the upshot is because I was concussed, I have to have 12 days out of the gig, that, which means I can't race, drive, can't jog a horse. And yeah, and um, I'm booked in to have a, a test next Thursday week to give me my clearance, I hope. So let's go through the process as far as the fall itself. Yeah, got no recollection of the fall. Um, my horse galloped on the first turn and shuffled me back through the field and I lost contact with the field. And yeah, I actually, from my memory, I thought the uh, fall happened just after the winning post, but um, from looking at the re race replays, it actually happened over in the back straight. So from what I've seen, I'm pretty glad I've got no recollection of what actually happened to me. Yeah, it was good to see that Tom Callaghan was able to bounce back, a little bit of soreness in the shoulder and so forth, but youth, Glenn, on their side. Yeah, um, Tom was very lucky um, from what I've seen on the video. Um, when Tom's fallen, Tom's fallen to the right-hand side and rolled away a little bit, and um, my horse tried to hurdle over the top of his, so if Tom was standing in or sitting in the way or, or trapped in the way, Tom would have been fairly well hurt, and I'm glad that he was able to come out of it unscathed and lend assistance, you know, full credit to him. He's only a 17-year-old boy and uh, he got up and when he seen that his horse had disappeared, um, he had the presence of mind to uh, lend assistance to my horse and hold it to the ground until assistant, more assistance come and they tell me that he was calling out to me to wake up, wake up and uh, yeah, I shouldn't be sleeping where I was. Well, you might just explain to the uh, viewers, Glenn, a horse can do more damage to itself when it's tangled up in its gear. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, if it starts thrashing around and, um, yeah, it can, can get tangled up and if it gets up and takes off, then it can fall over and, and do more damage. So, yeah, it's best um, if they're laying down on the ground tangled up just to sit on their head and take their centre of balance out by sitting on their heads and hold them down. Now, I believe you had a bit of a scary moment at the hospital when you woke up at one stage and your legs were strapped together. Yeah, I was drifting in and out of consciousness and uh, at one stage I, I woke up and my legs were strapped and I didn't know they were strapped and I couldn't move my legs and I started getting quite aggressive that um, I couldn't move my legs and I was trying I was thrashing around a bit and um, swearing a little bit which is unlike me and yeah I, I just wanted my legs released but yeah um, eventually uh, they got me to calm down and explain what was going on and yeah I, I behaved myself from there on in. Do you think at one stage there may have been damage to your legs or your back? No, nah, well, as I said, I was drifting in and out of consciousness and I've got to say the, the, the staff at the John Hunter Hospital, they were terrific. I, I can't make any criticism of any of them, the doctors, the nurses, the orderlies. They just treated me like I was part of their family, which I'm really appreciative of. And when at one stage when they were asking you different questions, you thought they were asking you when you were born and the answer you came up with 1996. Boy, that's a far off uh, assessment. It was a little bit off, but I, I can't see the problem. <laughs> it was only 36 years out, but there was nothing wrong with that. And as, as we said, everyone's been uh, very kind, to me, and rightfully so, being here today. So you have to see the doctor, and then we're just going to take that process to when you can get back. Yeah, that's correct. The, the, the only downside of the, the fall is, you know, um, because they don't know what's wrong with you, they've got to um, cut everything off. You know, they cut the colours off, they cut colours up the sleeves and up the centre and as everybody's aware of I always wear a uh, South Sydney training shirt underneath my vest and they cut that I just couldn't handle that I just couldn't handle that and um, to Ellie Chapel's credit she was in the hospital room with me and I said I can't find my South Sydney shirt because I, I just had a jacket on I was a bit cold and 
And she went over to me, driving boots was, was sitting in a cupboard there, and she pulled them out and she said, this might be what you're looking for. And yeah, I was a little bit devastated and a little bit cranky again, but you know, it is what it is. But I, I just wish they'd have been able to wait until I was conscious enough to say, get it off me, but don't cut it off. Well, it's just the year South have had. It's pretty hard to salvage anything from this year. <laughs> You're right there. But we've got to look forward to next year. And, yeah, I look forward to a new shirt. <laughs> so the fall hasn't knocked any sense and you're still going to follow the Rabbitohs? Going to follow the Rabbitohs until the day I die, yep. Now, listen, what have you done with your daughter, Tia? The pink hairdo? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, I thought I was the one concussed, but it appears that she's copped a little bit of the backwash. Um, yeah, her, her daughter asked that, that um, she'd like to see her in pink hair, so she went to the hairdressers yesterday and got her hair dyed pink. Yeah, so they tell me it's only a shampoo to wash out, but, geez, I haven't seen her wash it out yet, so I'm hoping. I hope your granddaughter doesn't want you to uh, try dyeing your hair. Well, you know that ain't going to happen, but <laughs> I'll try my best for her. Glenn, it's great to see you up and about. More importantly, it's great to see you smiling, chirpy as always, and hopefully you'll be back in the sulky sooner than later. Yeah, I, I've got to make a comeback because um, I've got some unfinished business. Yeah, there's still plenty of races out there for some old fellas to win, so yeah. And it's way too early to start digging up all those biscuit tins that you've buried away. Yeah, yeah, I was a dummy. I buried them all in plastic containers, so I can't find them now. Glenn, thanks for your company, and as I said, great to see you up and about. Thank you very much.